Bibles can be found on page 690 of the Old Testament. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice. Because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephraim. And all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The epistle reading comes from the book of Ephesians, chapter 3, verses 1 through 12, and it's on page 193 in the New Testament. This is the reason that I, Paul, a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. The New Testament lesson comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, on page 2 of the New Testament. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child of Mary's mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Word of God. 
happened to be in that town? No. They wanted to find this King of Kings. They wanted to find Jesus and honor Him. I imagine many of us here have that desire to see Jesus and a desire for truth. But if so, what sense of urgency do we place on our relationship with Jesus? What priority do we give this relationship? Think of it this way. I know of someone who had said he received a Lionel train set. Him and his brothers received it for Christmas one year. And as he got older, he had acquired that set one year. And he had this goal of making it new again. So he spent hours fixing it, sanding it, putting money into it, tweaking it, and getting it back to its original perfect condition. He was so driven by this goal of making it new again. He wanted it just right. His whole family now enjoys that train set. So long as they don't touch it, that is. <laughs> Are we that way with our relationship with Jesus? Do we wake up every morning wanting to spend time in with Him? Do we get all those moments of urgency and desire to be and spend time with Him throughout the day? Do we keep Him to ourselves because we don't want others to invade that space? See, these wise guys have a sense of urgency and a desire for truth. They had to meet the King of Kings so badly that they thought about it day and night, and they would not stop until they found him. Now, even after they found him, they had a reaction. That can also teach us about how to be wise people. The verse says this, for when they had seen the star that had stopped over the place where Jesus was, they became overjoyed. It was their thrill of victory. It was the end of their likely several long months search. It's like when I witness my children. When they anticipate a family or friend coming over, they get so overjoyed they can hardly contain themselves and they're watching the clock and they're looking out the window and they're watching the clock and they're looking out the window until finally that guest arrives and they, that guest is bombarded with hugs and overjoy. Do we have this overjoy that should come from knowing our Savior? Or are we just going through the motions? Perhaps we can learn from these wise men to find that overjoy by recognizing that Jesus' birth meant that God came to earth in human form to save all of us. God on earth. 
As a part of worship, they gave gifts. Good gifts. Gold was a kingly gift and was reserved usually for the gods. Frankincense was a costly incense and was meant to, to infer wisdom. Myrrh was a costly perfume that symbolized long life and healing. All of these gifts were gifts fit for a king. Yet these wise guys knew that it was fit for the right king. Because they saw King Herod first and they didn't share those gifts with him. They saved them for the king of kings, Jesus. They had an attitude of worship that means giving back to God for all that God had given them. Now I'm sure if you are here week after week, you've heard me say many times before the offering, out of the joy of your hearts, give back to God what is God's. These wise guys in this story are displaying this idea of how we should have that relationship with Jesus, our Savior. We should be so overjoyed that we can't help but want to give our kingly gifts back to God. And at last, these wise guys can teach us about worship. Is that like the shepherds, they bow to their knees and surrender their hearts to Christ. The wise guys have a lot to teach people who are seeking to be wise in their relationship with Jesus. A relationship that begins with that surrendering of our heart. For the wise men, the journey was not the objective. The objective was to find Jesus, surrender their hearts, and worship Him. This Christmas, I'm sure many of us traveled. And we had a destination in mind, but the destination was not the goal of the trip. It was only the beginning. The goal is what we will do when we are there. The goal for Christians is to be like the wise men and discover the leading character in the Christmas story, Jesus. God has created us to find Jesus and worship Him. Let us learn from the wise guys and approach Jesus today and every day with a sense of urgency, with joy, and with worship.